Well, hello monkeys. Welcome back. Trying to work through a backlog of knives I have in, and today that backlog includes Hot Owl, the Boker Plus Caracal. This is a nice little folder. Now, uh, has its issues, but uh, this is so you know. Um, this is one of the knives that Terry, Brother Terry, gave me to review, to keep if I liked it, or to give it away if something happened. I didn't like it, but I think he knew that I was going to be giving them all away anyway, so no matter what, this one's going out, whether I like it or not. And that's, I mean, this thing has a great aesthetic. There are a couple things I'm going to point out to you that'll make you scratch your head once you figure them out, but... Black G10, oh yeah. Interesting, kind of harpoon drop point. Um, has a nice fuller with a slot there. Show you. Uh, 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 uh. Can we get a decent shot of that maker's mark? Anyway, there's D2, that's your billboarding. Stainless steel hardware. You can see interesting clip goes under the scales. I like it when they do that. You can see there is some milling. Come on. See there is milling on those stainless steel liners. The lock bar access. That is going to be the first gig. Um, not easy to reach and uh, not easy on the finger to get in there. While we're here, this is one of my biggest problems. Mid-grip ridges are always an issue for me, and I, I don't even know what the world this is. It's like a pimple right in the middle of your grip. I don't understand why it would be there, but uh, guess where it hits? Right in the middle of that finger. So, now all four of my fingers just barely fit on here. In fact, it's really more like three and a half fingers, but... Uh, Overall, if it weren't for that, a little bump right there, um, this thing probably wouldn't feel too bad in hand, but that bump just kind of throws everything out of whack. So, you can flip that pocket clip around, and like I said, I like this treatment for pocket clips, personally. You have uh, what I think is supposed to be maybe a glass breaker back here on the back side of your backspacer. And nice responsive flip, um, shake shutty. I don't know how much this has been broken in. It did not come with a box, so I cannot show you what the box for this one looked like. I have a feeling it looks like that black magnetic opening Boker Plus box. Uh, I'll tell you what, I have one up here from a fixed blade I got from Kevin over at Spider Knives. So probably a much smaller version of this style of box where you basically just have a small magnetic flap on the front and cardboard box. So, But at the end of the day this knife is a little bit too small for my hands and that bump right there, the lock bar access, the D2, and the fact that this is a hundred dollar knife. That's right, I said $100 for D2. Um, there are a lot of ways to go with that, but at the end of the day, um, I think there are just a lot more affordable D2 options on the market that would fit my hand better um, than this one, personally. Uh, it's a really good looking knife, though. So, let's zoom in a bit. Get some numbers. So we have right at a three inch blade and pretty much all three inches of that is cutting edge. Overall length, sorry. Dur, dur, dur. Overall length out to this point on the tip is seven and a quarter inches. The closed length is about four and a quarter inches. 
and your grippable area. Three and three quarters. Um, yeah, three and th call it three and three quarters, and that's being a little bit generous, but uh, not a huge knife. So uh, I tell you what, let's start down here. The Spyderco Para Three. That's right where you're living. This is about the same size as a Para Three or a Sage Five. Sage Five is a tiny bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger. Um, even then, by the time you get everything out to try and meet the the back of this backspacer, it's really about the same size. Um, and the Para Three is maybe just a tiny bit smaller. We go with a QSP Penguin. Again, off basically just by what sticks out on the backspacer back here. The handle and the blade, without that, are roughly the same size. Let's go with a Civivi. It's a Synergy 3, I believe. Um, ever so slightly longer on both ends. And that is the Sincut Saxa. However you want to pronounce it. S-A-C-H-S-E. And let's go a little bit smaller just to see. Huh? Not very far off. Again, about the same length if you took off that back where the lanyard hole is. And one last comparison, which isn't really a comparison. It is... Including this in a daily carry. So, small fixed blade, actually getting closer to a medium sized fixed blade, medium to large folder, and a small folder. So, that's kind of how it would look in a, I guess, all but the, the Firecraft is, is fairly budget. And that, I'll have course I'll have the uh, specs up in here for you if not they'll be in the description and that's really about all I have for you on this one this one is um, didn't get out and beat this one to death uh, just because it didn't feel real well in my hand and I knew that it was not one that I would end up enjoying doing a lot of cutting tasks with so I used it for some stuff around the house some of the more basic stuff and that's pretty much it. Now, you cannot, I cannot, I can get my finger in there, but I cannot get that detent to break on the, uh, full, using the fuller or the slot there. But the flipper tab is incredibly responsive on this one. So, negatives for me, D2, the grip pimple, lock bar access, and uh, just a, a little bit small. Positives, incredibly responsive, great aesthetic. It could be just a little bit bigger. Um, oh, and another negative was the price point. At $100, I think you can do better. In fact, uh, for $60 right now, you can go out and get one of these and end up with what I think is a much better knife. Um, for $85, all day long. I would recommend this. Um, save yourself $15 and go get an Orion Solaris. This is a an incredible knife for the price. Um, and I think you would be infinitely happier with it than you would be with the Boker Plus Caracol. If this were a $60 D2 knife, I might have a more of a difficult time making that recommendation. But... Uh, as it is, uh, there are too many, in fact, just go here. <laughs> the best tech, another knife from Terry, the best tech operator, 
um, great knife D2 uh, far cheaper um, fits my hand better although still not perfectly or go less than half price get a CJRB feldspar fits my hand much better everything about it is uh, much more friendly to my mitts so either one of these I would probably recommend higher than this one but uh, at the end of the day it's not a bad knife it's just got a lot of issues with it as far as ergos and that price point but uh, good looking knife very snappy very solid in terms of build and nice stout blade not super thick but uh, not a, a really really thin blade stock either and uh, just an all-around good-looking knife so if you have smaller hands if you think you can deal with the grip pimple there and a uh, <clears throat> hundred dollars for some D2 um, is in your wheelhouse and this looks like something that it just speaks to you they are still available go out and check them out and uh, if you like them let me know if you have one of these and you just absolutely love it it fits your hand just right please let me know because I cannot figure out what that is about other than that and the price point and just being the slightest bit small other than that it is a good knife it could be a great knife with just a few minor changes in my opinion but that would be to make it for me this knife wasn't designed for me obviously maybe it was designed for you so go check it out if it is if you think it is and let me know what you think otherwise until i see you again and i do hope i see you again stay well be kind do good that's it this grumpy and i'm out